Welcome everyone again. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time today. Uh, I see that is the last day of the conference after lunch. Yeah, thank you <laughs> for willing uh, to hear about uh, open telemetry. So, uh, as you can uh, read by uh, the first slide, auto instrumentation for your Node.js application. Uh, yeah, I know that we have a couple of guys here that could be familiar with OpenTelemetry, but who is not familiar with OpenTelemetry at all? One, two, okay, yeah, it's great uh, because, uh, yeah, after uh, introducing me, uh, I will explain a little bit the OpenTelemetry workflow. Uh, my name is uh, Yuri. I work uh, with Rose, thank Rose, uh, in the operator enablement team uh, at Red Hat. Uh, we kind of handle different uh, operators for our customers and partners. And I'm uh, kind of uh, contributing actively to uh, the OpenTelemetry operator project. Okay? So, how the open telemetry works for whom is not uh, familiar with? Uh, we have on the, let me see, on the right side uh, of the screen, uh, the traffic that, we, that is coming in uh, into the engine, uh, which is called uh, open telemetry collector or OTEL for the close friends. And the traffic is about the three pillars of observability. Uh, metrics, traces, and logs, okay? And once uh, we reach uh, this engine, the hotel collector, okay, uh, we can process, uh, we can uh, split in batches, uh, for example, uh, our monitoring data, and then we transmit for the left side uh, to our destination. That could be, for example, a tempo, a Grafana tempo, which is a, a database for traces, or a Prometheus also that can be used for store our metrics, or yeah, any Jaeger, for example, for traces also, or logs uh, as well, yeah, in any instance that you want. I gave you some uh, examples that you can integrate natively uh, with OpenTelemetry, but Keep in mind that we have uh, more uh, uh, integrations with different third parties uh, uh, applications. So, uh, oh, it's not working, yeah. On, uh, on the right side, I mentioned uh, that we have, uh, oh sorry, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Th now it's good? Yeah, okay. On the right side, I mentioned that uh, we have uh, the incoming traffic, okay, from the matrix traces and in logs, or yeah, also you know profiling uh, if you if you prefer, we call that right side as receivers, okay, which by definition can be push or pull based, and then is how we configure open telemetry to listen uh, the observability data, okay. I mentioned, for example, Prometheus, because Prometheus can be a receiver push or uh, pull based, okay? And OTLP, that I don't know if you heard about uh, that abstraction, OTLP, but means open telemetry protocol that uh, nowadays is a pretty, I would say, standard protocol in the observability area that enabling you, uh, that enable you to yeah, create using the Open Telemetry SDK uh, a, a channel to transmit and receive also the the monitoring data. Okay, I just yeah uh, figure out some you know, ellipses that you can uh, understand as receivers. And on the left side of the screen, you can see that we can have also it's because of the arrow has the two uh, the two ways uh, the pool based uh, way also. I mentioned also that uh, in the middle of everything, we have the, uh, the open telemetry collector engine, uh, which is, yeah, the engine, which is the, the motor that uh, uh, yeah, runs the open telemetry application. At that point, we can configure some processors, you know, some, yeah, kind of, how can we optimize or how can we get our monitoring stuff resilient 
or yeah, in a proper way to deliver our application in the style that we want. And then I, uh, I brought some examples like batch, matrix, memory limiter, resource attributes, who yeah, ever suffered with uh, cardinality uh, in Prometheus, for example. Then using the resource attributes, you can uh, remove or yeah, replace any yeah, labels that you want, that you want in, in some Prometheus matrix. Okay, and uh, finally, exporters, because we have uh, reached this uh, third uh, step of the monitoring uh, environment. Then the data got processed, the data got enriched, for example, uh, in a case of traces that you have yeah, enabled some yeah, different attributes or, yeah, uh, different, uh, or you split it in some batches of, I don't know, one mega or 50 megabytes uh, to, to don't overload your uh, uh, final destination. Again, uh, exporters on uh, the, the left side, uh, you can see that we can have uh, time series database, traces database, column stores, logs, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're okay. This is the theory uh, part. How can I uh, get started uh, properly? Uh, how can I install the open telemetry? How can I use it uh, in a reliable way in our Kubernetes clusters? It's through the open telemetry operator. Uh, Hotel, again, for the close friends, open telemetry operator. And uh, basically, four reasons uh, to uh, use it. Simplified deployment and configuration because uh, when you have uh, the kind of application you you have to configure uh, yeah a deployment you have to configure either way a, a stateful set or a config map secrets and so on when you uh, put together in a custom resource definition on a CRD it simplified the way you deliver uh, open telemetry and automatic management uh, tomorrow if you want to do. A uh, uh, seamless upgrade is just uh, do your upgrade and trust on the on the operate SDK, <laughs> and also yeah uh, native integration with the Kubernetes ecosystem and also scalability because okay uh, open telemetry uh, deliver an option to yeah receive and transmit data, but if it's not scalable uh, it could be a problem in the middle of uh, this. Uh, environment, this observability environment. Uh, there are three ways uh, to uh, implement that or install that in our cluster. Yeah, through a uh, manual way, just kubectl apply uh, through our GitHub repo. Second one, using Helm charts. We have pretty uh, standard and yeah, straightforward Helm charts and also OLM, okay? Uh, I don't know, I believe everyone is familiar with the operator hub, but uh, if in the case of you are not familiar, just access the operator hub and you have all uh, the instructions uh, to, uh, to install the open telemetry operator, okay? The open telemetry operator defines uh, two custom uh, resource definitions. The first one is the open telemetry collector, which is the engine, again, uh, with the open telemetry, and we have the configuration. You can see is a YAML file, yeah, probably uh, everyone <laughs> is a YAML <laughs> chief officer, <laughs> uh, just kidding. And then we have uh, receivers, for example, I created here an OTLP receiver with two uh, protocol channels, for one for gRPC and one for HTTP, and also I'm uh, limiting somehow the memory, yeah, splitting in, in batches, and I just put here an exporter debug because I'd like to see how the traffic is being received and being transmitted. And uh, when I mentioned the pipelines, uh, in that case, I put only the pipelines for traces. Uh, when I see the pipeline, please, uh, there is no CI CD <laughs> in the open telemetry pipeline means the observability pipeline. You are telling uh, to the engine that uh, you, in that case, are going only to deliver traces. Tomorrow, if you want to deliver logs, metrics, it's just put uh, the, the, yeah, uh, 
below that configuration. And also uh, on the uh, instrumentation, uh, custom, the, custom, the CRG for instrumentation, uh, you have some yeah, definitions because this CRG will do the magic that I'm proposing at that talk, okay? Will uh, collect automatically uh, the traces, metrics, and logs uh, from your application, or in, in our case here, only traces, and uh, transmit to a definite uh, open telemetry collector installed uh, previously in your cluster. Okay, some, yeah, some stuff that uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty good to know about uh, this CRG, some, yeah, possible configurations. It can be deployed, yeah, in the, the, the as a deployment, stateful set, uh, demo set, sidecar, and so on. Also, uh, we can uh, build one, if you are interested to build a specific image uh, of uh, the open telemetry collector, you can do it. Uh, otherwise, you can use either a uh, contrib, uh, there is a repo called contrib for the open telemetry, and also the core one uh, with uh, different uh, receivers and uh, uh, exporters and also processors, okay? Uh, this is uh, the whole difference because if you don't have any, I would say, any receiver for your specific, uh, yeah, I would say traces database or metrics database, uh, you can check if uh, there is a available receiver in one of these images. We have Outscaler, uh, we have also uh, the PDB pod disruption budget natively configured, and if you have a more uh, complex structure with Prometheus and so on, you can take advantage of using the target allocator, which means that you are going to attach a target uh, to this open telemetry, and then all uh, the, all, I would say, the, all the auxiliaries uh, open telemetry will send uh, metrics for this central one, you know? This target allocator is another subject. Uh, it's a uh, value, uh, yeah, a real talk only for that, but take a look. Auto-instrumentation CRD also, yeah, well, for example, uh, uh, nowadays we have a lot of monitoring data coming in and then you can uh, simply check, okay, I don't know if I can transmit 100% of my uh, monitoring data, but 25%, let's say that. And then you can configure uh, based on that uh, trace ID ratio. And then uh, if uh, tomorrow you want to replace to 100%, you can just put 1.00, okay? And also uh, when I, I mentioned Node.js, uh, you can configure different languages like Java, Node.js, uh, .NET, if I'm not wrong, and even .NET, and uh, you can yeah, tell the, the, the instrumentation for uh, which collector uh, it will be sent, okay? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, we have auto-instrumentation for all these libraries, okay, or, uh, I, I, I mean libraries because uh, the auto-instrumentation in the end of the day is an image that do uh, work together with the auto-instrumentation and we have for Node.js, Python, Go, Apache, .NET, and so on. And uh, some, some you know, few slides ago, I mentioned that we have the operator SDK, you know, and then we have uh, this uh, kind of language that you can use uh, to manually <laughs> instrument your application. Okay, so uh, doing the setup uh, for auto instrumentation, uh, I will do a demo, okay, to dem to basically show you how that works. But uh, we have to create a resource called the Open Telemetry Collector. Okay, it's simply like that. It, it's simple like that. And then uh, when the collector is running, uh, I will uh, yeah install an instrumentation and define some annotations in one uh, sample application, a voting application that I have uh, created, okay? Uh, just to give you an example about how to work uh, the annotation, uh, yeah, it's like uh, for Java, if you want to inject uh, the Java libraries for auto instrumentation, you have to set pretty straightforward, inject uh, dash Java true, uh, inject dash Python, for example, true, and so on and so forth. Well, let's test it. 
uh, well, 50 minutes. I, I promise that would be pretty straightforward. So um, I have uh, here, uh, let, me, let me know if the, the font size is okay, is readable. Okay, it's good. So um, I have created uh, a namespace here called devconf. Okay, uh, which I uh, previously uh, prepared a Grafana instance and a tempo, okay, to receive our, uh, yeah, to receive our traces. Let me yeah, stand up. And uh, what I would do is uh, deploying, and also I have uh, deployed the, the, open, the open telemetry operator and deployed the set manager, all the backend stuff, because I didn't know if we gonna have a time constraint or not. Uh, well, and um, as you can see, I have uh, created here a Node.js application, which uh, is pretty straightforward. I have two endpoints without any kind of uh, yeah, out, uh, instrumentation, observability instrumentation. It's just exposing a port and yeah, enabling two uh, endpoints, okay? I built an image, yeah, previously, and, and so on and so forth, okay? And what I would do at first, I, I mentioned that uh, we have to deploy an open telemetry collector, okay? So let me apply it. I, I get a helper here. Kipkero apply dash f hotel. I'm on the right side, yeah. Okay. Get pods. Oh, sorry. Uh, dev conf. I have a uh, hotel hotel collector up and running. Okay. Now uh, let me uh, show you uh, the instrumentation. Uh, CRG, okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, I'm yeah. Now I define it 100% of the trace that I uh, I'd like to submit to uh, to the hotel collector, okay, and create yeah, pretty straightforward uh, 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 instrumentation CRG. I will apply it, okay. Uh, sorry, apply. Instrumentation, okay. Uh, you can get all the instrumentation, the hotel inst. Uh, again, I always forgot the namespace. And then you can see we have uh, uh, instrumentation CRG uh, created. And now I will uh, create uh, the voting, the voting application. Okay. Keep keto apply. Yes, uh, deployment. Okay, I have also a service. Get pods. Okay, so what we have now, we have a Grafana, we have a Node.js, we have an auto collector, and uh, we should see, yeah, the, the vote application. Okay, it's everything up and running. If we go to if we go to Grafana and see the tempo, we can see yeah any let's say any trace because yeah we don't have any uh, instrumented thing yet because we didn't set we didn't patch our application uh, to get auto instrumented. Okay, now uh, I will uh, do the patch. Okay, to include uh, to include the, the auto instrumentation uh, annotation. Okay, let me do this. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's see. Get pods. Oh my. And that's gone. Okay, it's terminating because we patch it and it's doing uh, the rollout. Okay. So uh, the application is running, the application is patched, and Yuri, what is the difference when I patch the application passing, yeah, 
passing this uh, instrumentation. Let me uh, show you real quick. Uh, if I uh, get you, uh, for example, pods uh, dash in dev conf. Uh, pods and then uh, the Node.js voting. We can do a YAML and then you can see here that uh, uh, the open telemetry inject, uh, injected uh, init container, okay, with uh, that version uh, passing yeah, some variables and yeah, some parameters to uh, collect traces from uh, the Node.js application. Okay, then basically uh, this, is the, this, this is the difference uh, that we have after we set this annotation. Okay, so uh, what I have to do is uh, generating yeah, some traffic uh, to our application. Let me open a port here, okay? And then do a, I don't know, a curl, <laughs> a simple curl to the application. Okay, let's do more, 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 more. It's a one election for one candidate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if we check uh, the tempo again, uh, I can see some traces. So the application got auto-instrumented. If you uh, go to yeah, uh, span, for example, that is a trace, you can see what uh, happened when you uh, called the local host slash vote. Okay? Thanks God it worked. <laughs> it was, yeah, live, uh, not recorded. And then you can see everything here. I didn't uh, invest time yeah, creating some resource attributes processor yeah, to either way remove or add some attributes uh, to this trace, okay? You can see here, yeah, another one. But uh, it's pretty, yeah, yeah, the native, uh, library is yeah pretty rich uh, in the sense of uh, resource attributes for uh, the monitoring data, and uh, you can use it. In our case today, I used uh, the the Node.js, the Node.js library, but again, you can use for Python and the another available uh, libraries. Okay, so uh, let me. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. I'm modifying the declaration of the deployment, right? Uh, either way, because can you repeat the question? Yeah, uh, it's because. Ah, okay. Ah, sorry. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. Yeah, the question is if uh, how that how that annotation. Sorry, uh, I got wrong. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the question is if uh, what what we do if we have a, a GitOps uh, way, how can we set this annotation and how that works? Uh, well, uh, as you said on the deployment, uh, you can have, for example, uh, uh, I don't know in the case of Argo CD, I know that you can exclude some annotations in the Argo CD. I would recommend that, you know? But again, uh, in the takeaways, I will explain that because the auto-instrumentation is for uh, teams that don't, don't have uh, time to real uh, instrument their application, you know? It's just a start, you know? Because uh, I got, uh, yeah, pretty often a question, hey, look, I have a, a huge technical depth in my team. How can I start? monitoring mine applications. And then this is a way uh, to start monitoring uh, your application. Okay? Uh, yeah, no problem, thank you. Uh, yeah, and the takeaways is, again, I just uh, uh, mentioned that if you had no visibility, 
you can uh, use uh, the auto instrumentation to take advantage uh, of that. Uh, during the development process, if you uh, don't have time to use the operator SDK to manual uh, instrument your application, then uh, also use the auto instrumentation. And uh, when I mentioned the customized images, uh, I mentioned the contrib and the core ones. Uh, if you can't see any uh, receiver or exporter uh, in our repos, please uh, just approach me, then I can guide you how can you write a new receiver for uh, your specific uh, uh, target, okay? Uh, I believe uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for your time, and we are open to questions. So, um, in the span, no, it's yeah, it creates also for the function calls, uh, but depends. Uh, sorry, but depends of the uh, the. The, the the library that you are using. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. Let me let me check. Yeah. Uh, just a second. Yeah, it should be should be there. Here. Do you mean? Yes. Do you mean the fun? Oh, sorry. Ah, ah, sorry. Here. Do you mean that? Do you mean that the request handler or? The question is if uh, if the the question is if the the automate, auto instrumentation library uh, get traces or generate traces uh, from the function. I mean, but it's it's about the function that uh, enable the vote uh, the vote endpoint, right? Or am I am I got wrong? Yeah, because uh, the code is yeah the code no no, no the, the code is, is pretty straightforward because you have here uh, for example this yeah endpoint and you enable yeah everything and then when you do a, a post you yeah register the the trace it's it's like that or. No? No? Why not? Yeah, no? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not, yeah. It, it should be explored, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I mean, I, I've been running uh, with the Node.js auto instrumentation. Uh, yeah, I'm not, a, a, I would say, experienced Node.js developer, uh, more a Golang, but uh, in that regard, I've seen a lot of, yeah, pretty well auto instrumentation auto-instrumented Node.js applications, you know? But, yeah, you can be better than me. I might be wrong. Okay, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, please, uh, if you, yeah, uh, don't find any, any receiver or any uh, auto-instrumented library, please just uh, helping us uh, evolve in that project, okay? I believe that's it.